We're now joined by Professor Herman Ndofo, who's uh, with the Indiana University Keeley School of Business. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Um, what do you make of uh, these indictments? Well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure always coming on. It is not surprising. Um, I, say, I would say it's long overdue uh, because in a conflict situation such as this, we've had so many opportunists who have just wrecked havoc on the population. And kidnapping has really been the number one malaise that the people in southern Cameroons have been suffering for probably the past four years now across. Um, we believe this is just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the kidnappings that were mentioned here, if you look at the, the four counts, all of them pretty much rest on kidnapping. And I would mention one of the India, uh, the individuals kidnapped in this particular case was a cardinal, uh, late Cardinal Tumi. Uh, and he, he was probably one of the more known people kidnapped, but almost every day Southern Cameroonians are kidnapped for ransom. So who are these people? What is their cause? Well, <clears throat> so I think we have to, there are three people, three groups of individuals we have to separate out here. We have to separate out uh, those fighting for the liberation of Southern Cameroon, the, the restoration fighters, as they are generally known, are sometimes colloquially amber boys. We have to separate out elements of Cameroon government, such as our fifth column organizations, uh, fighting groups that are on the ground also uh, wrecking havoc. Then we have to separate out criminal elements, right? When you have lack of security, criminals come in and, and, and they uh, propagate all sorts of uh, nefarious activities. These three individuals' names uh, were part of what they call the LGA of, um, a splinter wing government uh, led by uh, uh, Ekome Sako uh, um, and, and, and later on now, I believe, uh, Christopher Fobine Anu. And while they started uh, probably in 2017 as part of the legitimate uh, uh, leadership of Southern Cameroon trying to question independence, they quickly broke off and started doing uh, nefarious activities, criminal activities, mm. and probably some people believe later actually acting at the behest of Cameroon government. But by the time of this ind indictment, I would say most of these individuals were working outside of uh, the framework of Southern Cameroons or uh, Ambazonia uh, uh, liberation fighters is the term I would use, yes. So how big is their particular movement? Because they're indicted for raising funds, weapons and supplies. Who are they going to and how big is their movement on the ground? Well, um, we se separate time periods. 2018-19, uh, mm. I would say they really controlled a sizable chunk of the fighters, uh, what they call the Ambazonia Restoration Forces. Today, uh, that is negligible, right? They control uh, one or two criminal gangs uh, that are involved uh, in uh, mostly kidnappings. Uh, so their following on the ground is negligible. Uh, I would say negligible. It's pretty much one or two criminal gangs. So as I said, they started off as being part of more a broader legitimate movement and quickly broke off into profiteering. You've made a suggestion that uh, the, there's, there's possible links to the Cameroon government. Is that to destabilize what some might call the legitimate cause of the Southern Cameroons? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, very definitely. Um, I would say one of the things we are really looking forward to seeing the full indictment and uh, the other indictments that are, are coming. So if I add a piece of information, simultaneous to their arrest, uh, the home of uh, one of the, 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 the faction leaders, uh, Christopher Fobunia, was also raided by, the F by, by, I believe, the FBI. That was Monday morning and they confiscated uh, uh, electronic devices. Some other homes were raided. We don't yet know which homes were raided. So this is part of an ongoing investigation. We know that the federal government is also investigating the, uh, the financial side uh, of lo lots of uh, funds uh, that were collected that never made their way. They are investigating the kidnapping, not only of this particular group, this, particularly, this particular group of the ARFs did some, but probably the last two or three years, it has mostly been done by a group known as Ambazonia Defense Forces, ADF and AGOF-C, 
uh, that are pretty much based in the U.S. Uh, in Norway, the leader is in Norway, and one of the action commanders uh, is in China, where they have been uh, kidnapping. A few months ago, they actually kidnapped a sitting senator for ransom on any given day, a huge number. We do know that the U.S. authorities are looking uh, at those also. And, and so we are looking forward to the full report because when you see the full indictment, where they really start tracing the sources of uh, funds, I think many people expect and will not be surprised that if some of those funds trades would go back to members of Cameroon government, mm. uh, because it has really been their active uh, policy to use fifth column groups to wreak havoc on the population as a means of sowing distrust and destabilizing uh, the legitimate movement. Where will this leave Yaounde if links are made by a foreign agency such as uh, the FBI? Because it makes it difficult to downplay it. Yes, I think, one, I don't think the, 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 those in Yaounde would care, right? Mm. Um, uh, they have been caught doing a lot worse and they haven't blinked. So I don't think uh, individuals are featuring uh, in an indictment report more than likely, they will the term they will be that generally gets used by uh, the federal system. They will be called on indicted co-conspirators. So in indictments, they try not to name individuals who themselves have not yet been indicted. And so if these individuals are out of Cameroon, they will either go by a uh, suspect one or simply an unindicted co-conspirator. So it is unlikely that we will get names. But the description of the activities would, would likely point uh, in, in that direction. As cases like this... Uh, I, I may also add that uh, one of the key things underlying, because we have to separate <clears throat> out those who actually support the liberation and, uh, and provide for legitimate self-defense, and which is not what we're talking here, and those who actually uh, perpetuate criminal activity on civilian population, which is where the specific, uh, the U.S. Uh, codes that were violated, right? So the crime here is actually providing material support for kidnapping, maiming, and otherwise killing uh, uh, civilians, and particularly civilians with U.S. relatives also, because there's that, that, that clause. And a lot mm -hmm. of that has, has been gathering, because uh, I will tell you that everybody uh, from southern Cameroon in the diaspora, almost everybody has had to pay ransom to these individuals one way or another, whether they like it or not. It is almost become most of them no longer work. Uh, they just receive money uh, 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 directly or indirectly from such nefarious activities. Uh, so it comes as a big relief to many southern Cameroonians that the government is putting, the U.S. government is putting a stop, uh, a, a stop to this and hopefully their influence, the negative influence they have on the suffering of people in southern Cameroon uh, really gets eliminated or minimized. Is there a role for regional agencies, uh, uh, regional uh, bodies, um, ECOWAS, African Union? Uh, because it seems as if they know that this is going on, but for some reason, President Bia is allowed to walk among them. Yes, uh, which is, I suppose, the unfortunate story in Africa. And I, I wish I could say that Southern Cameroon was an exception. But I think one area we've seen really, I think, some hope. We saw what just happened with Tigray and Utopia. Uh, South, countries like South Africa, Kenya, I would say the more responsible governments, and maybe your preceding segment may negate my statement, but the more responsible governments uh, may become more forceful. Uh, groups such as the Tana Group, which was actually uh, active, the Tana Commission that was active in the Tigray settlement, they can step in because they have moral authority. They have moral authority. We can count less on the regional body, uh, bodies that are whose hands are politically tight, I may say. Mm. But those like the Turner Group with moral authority have to step up and find a way of forcing both sides uh, to the table. I mean, legitimately to the table, right? Not simply, you know, right now there are rumors of some talks about talks that, you know, would take forever. But while it's taking forever, people are dying every day on the ground. Just how bad is the situation in uh, the southern Cameroon's part of, of the country? Uh, you know, we often reduce um, it to Anglophone, Francophone, but I know that it's not that simple. No, it, it, it is not. Um, 
I was talking to people uh, in Bamenda just this morning. Uh, the situation is horrible. Uh, the Cameroon government in the past few months has escalated, has, has literally, and Bamenda is the chief town, uh, the chief commercial capital, the commercial main town, the capital is Boya, but the commercial main town of southern Cameroon, the largest population. Uh, the Cameroon government has essentially gone up and dug up all the roads. If you think about what the French did to Guinea-Bissau as they were pulling out uh, with uh, the exit from colonialization, this is essentially what we're seeing. A destruction of society as it stands. Uh, you have military barracks in almost all schools. Uh, two weeks ago, the military killed a child in school. And, they, you know, the students, we're talking 12 to 14-year-olds, had to actually use stones against active military in their school. Uh, then you throw in the kidnappings, right? I will tell you that I myself personally, my sister three weeks ago was around, she works in a hospital and uh, forces, I believe, uh, we believe it's Ambazonia Defense Forces with uh, Cho Ayaba in Norway, came in and collected all the staff and demanded that every family member pay 500,000 wow. uh, before they were released. Um, every single day you'd call somebody, either somebody has been kidnapped, killed, uh, or otherwise molested. So while we don't see the direct confrontational fighting inside the city, uh, the city itself has just devolved into a lack of rule and order. And a lot of this is perpetrated by soldiers in civilian clothes. Uh, you can tell, the, civ the population can tell from their accent, since they are mostly uh, French-speaking. Then also the fifth column groups that uh, many believe uh, are being funded uh, directly or indirectly by the Cameroon government. So the situation is really, really bad. Um, what we see and every, most people are beginning to describe is this is really, um, you know, with the exception of maybe Western Sahara, we're seeing the last case of colonialization in Africa towards its end, but with all the negative vestiges that many countries face as they try to end colonialization. Right. I think Southern Cameroonians clearly say that this is a case of Africa on Africa colonialization. And we are seeing what the British did in Kenya at, uh, as they were about to pull out what the French did to Guinea-Bissau. That is essentially what we see happening right now with Southern Cameroon. And if we could possibly, the international community could possibly enforce a way to get observers, because all of this is being done without much coverage because observers are not allowed on the ground. Medicine San Francisco has been banned from the area Almost no NGO is allowed to operate or journalists allowed to operate or pictures being taken or circulated uh, without government censorship. So it makes it very difficult to air out or to, to uh, disseminate uh, information about all the atrocities that are taking place. But once again, we really hope that uh, what the U.S. government has started doing is a first step. Uh, we hope that many more can. We hope it also matches it with sanctions against uh, identified members of the Cameroon government that are participating in these atrocities here. We're talking about uh, 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 the, the leadership of the B, uh, the leadership of the SED, uh, where they have the, the torture chambers uh, that are torturing a lot of the individuals. And I would also add ministers of government that directly uh, are responsible for some of these agencies that are committing the atrocities on the ground. These individuals are well known to the international community. The US government knows them very well. And lots of them have their bank accounts and resources in the West. And so if we start, if the US starts enforcing Russia type sanctions on the government of Cameroon, I, I strongly believe that they will come to the table very quickly to negotiate an end to this crisis and this war especially. Professor Ndofo, always good talking to you. Thanks for giving us an update tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. And that's where we leave uh, that story. That was Professor Herman Ndofo from the Indiana University uh, Keeley Business uh, School uh, talking to us about this development. Uh, three Cameroon nationals uh, have been uh, uh, indicted, arrested for funding. Uh, kidnapping activities, supplying uh, weapons, raising funds rather to supply weapons and uh, uh, for nefarious activity inside Cameroon.